So I want to do a little interview um, because I'm going to make a YouTube video of my hunt and part of the reason for that is that the Kansas Department of Fish and Wildlife wrote us all an email and said why don't you share your pictures and share information about your hunt <clears throat> and since I got the biggest buck of my life so far uh, I thought I would go ahead and make a YouTube video uh, even though I'm 75 years old you're going to see in this video a lot of emotion after the shot I was so full of adrenaline and emotion that it was uh, it was tremendous but it's real folks and that's how it is but uh, anyway this is our uh, <clears throat> One of our two homemade blinds, they're hexagonal. Uh, they used to have fabric walls that were camouflaged cotton duck fabric, but uh, that didn't last very long, so we put some hard siding on them and painted the camouflage on them and everything else. Uh, both of our blinds blew over last December, about a year ago, when we had a tremendous wind. I think it was 94 miles an hour, and uh, they were pretty wrecked up, but we have fixed up this one and put, instead of a ladder, we put stairs on there. And so this is, these are very comfortable. And I want to give you a little talk about how the, uh, the hunt transpired that morning that I got that big buck. <clears throat> so I have a feeder out here. And uh, typically I would have these two windows open because that's where we all, always see the, the deer. And I had this, this tripod um, setting in, in front of this window. And I, I used the grunt call and wouldn't you know a buck, a big buck came from that driving trail, but he, he stopped about 50 yards away behind all that, those branches on that tree there and in the first part of the YouTube video, you're going to be able to see him back in there. If you watch uh, right about there. And then you're going to be able to see him travel from left to right. Well, sure as heck, he moved over to this window. But I had the tripod in the wrong window. But you can hear when I stop the buck, I'll say, meh. And the buck stops, I mean, right right down there, about 22 yards away. And uh, you can hear how long I take to aim. I'm surprised I took that long, because I usually don't take that long. But I aimed for a long time and got a perfect hit. We have a padded, padded rest for the, for the crossbow. And I did use that rest. That was very useful. Uh, in this blind, we have some racks. Uh, I shot that one years ago with bow and arrow. This is one we found dead years ago. Don't know why it died. We had never seen that buck before, but in those days, we didn't have trail cameras. We have curtains on the windows and nice, comfortable seats. My rattling horns are over here, hanging on a hook, and here's another buck we found dead just a couple of years ago. We knew this buck from our cameras, and we had decided to pass him up because he had a broken off brow tine. We called him the broken brow tine buck. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the uh, YouTube video, and uh, it's a kind of a cold winter day today. Oh. 
I just blind grunted and a big buck came in from the north. He, I turned on the camera to the north. But then he started moving to my right, down where I'll show you now. It was the burr point buck, and I shot him with the crossbow, and I think I got a good hit. Oh my. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that this will be a good hit and an excellent recovery. In Christ's name, amen. I guess you can tell I'm a little high on adrenaline right now. I was in this tower blind, which is a homemade tower blind, and it's only about 22 yards from where I shot the buck. And I'm going to go see if I can find my arrow and what the blood situation looks like. Well, the buck came from that direction Power blind is over here. The buck was on this trail. And there is my arrow. Now we do see some hair and blood here and blood out that way. And the buck did the classic mule kick and crashed through right there. And uh, I will have to go over there and see what the blood situation is. Well, there's where he was stumbling all the way through here. And stumbling all the way, there's a heck of a easy trail to follow, but very little blood. Now I do see some hair right here, but very little blood. So I thought I had a heart shot or a double lung shot. And now I don't know, there's just a tiny speck of blood there, some specks. So obviously I need to follow this trail, see where it goes. I better get the crossbow and load another arrow in. So I'm waiting for my wife to come. I called her on the walkie-talkie. Waiting for her to come and help me with the search for the, for the buck. I'm still right at the tower blind as you can see, but I took a little walk down this little trail here. Now mind you, I shot the buck just right over here at the edge of the woods. So while I waited, I just took a little walk right over here. And what do I see down here? Oh my gosh, she looks big. It didn't go very far at all. 60 yards maybe. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we've now gotten up to the buck, and there really is not much blood trail, despite the fact that I hit him really well. And it must have been a heart shot. There's a little bit of blood here, but to be honest, there is not that much blood. I can see where the leaves are roughed up, and he just came down this hill. I mean, there's the tower blind right up there. And he didn't go very far after I shot him, just down this hill, 50 or 60 yards. And oh boy, I haven't put my hands on him yet, but I would have to say he looks pretty good. Praise the Lord. So right here is where the buck fell. I haven't even laid hands on him yet. And I'm glad he didn't go any further because there's a nasty draw here and then, then uphill. Now there is a fence line here, but that's our property across the fence as well. So uh, we'll get some pictures of this buck uh, when we get him positioned where I can hold him. Well, folks, this would have to be the biggest buck, uh, the best scoring buck I've ever shot in my life with any weapon. And I am really very happy. We call this buck the burr point buck for obvious reasons. And I think he's a pretty nice buck. I used a grunt call doing some blind calling and he came in and offered me a shot. And I, I got him in the heart, I think. He only went 50 or 60 yards and there's very little blood, but boy, he died quickly. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't see any exit wound here. We will look for it later, but it was a pass-through shot. And I think what it did, it came and hit this other shoulder. And since it's an expandable broadhead, it came out immediately because the arrow was lying right where I, where he was standing when I shot. And I don't mean beyond where he was standing, I mean right where. So I think it flung out of him uh, immediately and landed right where he had been standing. Well, what happened is this broadhead broke and we did find one of the blades inside the body cavity and uh, there's blood and hair up to about almost to where my fingers are. So it broke the end off the broadhead and it bounced right back out. This is a Rage expandable broadhead. So this is how we're going to try to do the retrieval of the buck. We have the Jeep. We have a tractor. And we have the Polaris. We're going to try to back the Polaris down the hill fairly close to the buck and hook some chains and ropes onto it. If I get stuck and can't get out, we'll use the tractor to pull the Polaris out. Once we get the buck out here on the flatland, we'll try to get the buck into the loader of the tractor because I want to lift it up before I field dress it and I want to lift it up with a scale with that tractor at home and see what he weighs uh, with before field dressing.
All right, we've lifted him up with the loader so that he is not on the ground. And there you can see he's uh, 260, 260 pounds uh, before field dressing. <laughs>